Twice's English releases have all maintained an interesting pattern. The almost motif-like usage of the word got, or oftentimes get, it has been appearing ever since the feels, and especially with their most recent release, I Got You, I have a hard time believing it will stop anytime soon, but I still wanted to look back upon the three songs in question, The Feels, Moonlight Sunrise, and I Got You, to see if I can determine a purpose for this pattern. I think it's a very smart move on their part because it has truly allowed them to build upon each new concept in what I believe is a very effective manner. But like I said, we have to start with The Feels. I spoke about this song in a recent video when I pointed out how it has a very close sense of psychic distance. This is crucial information because this often entails an epistemological approach, which TWICE fans tend to enjoy in their songs versus more ontological ones. TWICE fans enjoy being engrossed in the description of something rather than dipping their toes into something more action-oriented. However, the feels isn't really epistemological. Like I said, they repeatedly use the word got or get rather than something like I am, something to describe the speaker or even the subject. At the same time, the song isn't really ontological as it doesn't convey action either. They convey an experience and I think that is part of why they chose to write this in English. I know for a fact that in other languages like French, for example, this contrast wouldn't really work. After all, where we would say, I am hungry, the French would instead say, I have hunger. The meaning of have or got is often very different in English. The specifics are very important in this song because they do describe a lot of their good experiences. The titular feels in a way that would normally sound very negative, being stolen from or being struck by lightning. They toy with the ambiguity of the word feels and they toy with the ambiguity of how the language they chose functions in order to deliver a song that no one else could really deliver. But they went on to continue with this basic idea, the idea of having an experience that you can't always clearly describe in other songs like Moonlight Sunrise. Moonlight Sunrise is consumptive and it feeds on abstract language. They simultaneously emphasize their dire needs and show they themselves are well-rounded, not just crazed with cravings. They bring opposites together, they confuse body parts, butterflies being tripped on rather than fluttering in stomachs, their feet, their foundations are consumptive. They confuse intention and reality and ache with the passage of time, consumptive. They are minimalist in lines that tell it all and long and languid in lines that make out simplicity what they have got the mere ya in question they are at the beck and call of love and love identifies the abstract qualities of the concrete and concrete nature you don't think of in the abstract they are needy and aware of what they have to offer what they bring to the table part of what i got you has to offer and builds up is the notion that the relationship they speak of is one without doubt. I mean, the video starts with Mina's hand on the porthole where you can see a storm at sea, and that feels so perfect for this song. This love is like a glass barrier separating the curious eye from the actual violence of chaos. But I genuinely think a huge asset of the song is how it sounds, because something about that chorus has so many different implications based on how they translate in your brain. I think... I heard the song wrong at first, I, but I also think the phrasing might just be genius. I thought it was saying that it didn't matter what the subject did to or for them because the speaker would always view the subject as a driving force in their life. I think it's supposed to be more like the joy of always having each other, but I don't feel like I have to doubt one version and believe the other. The song does not leave me with room for true, genuine doubt because regardless of how I hear it, it feels like a hug. There are multiple examples of internal rhyme, including perfectly imperfect internal near rhyme. I like how they play with delineation because that also highlights the choices they make in their phrasing. The use of repetition in parentheses also portrays a sense of duality or even a guiding force throughout a verse. The syntax is also very deliberate. They will use the word I in a line that never includes a grammatical subject, pairing the U and the I mentioned together in a way that is so light it feels kind of heavy. They even emphasize the it, they will make it through with more parentheses, and in general, the song is very smart without being super blatant about the individual choices it makes. I think it sounds rather simple, and it does because 
the writing is just that perfect. I think people consider English releases like they are attempts to pander toward the Western market, but Twice seized upon the concept of English music being grabby and asked what it's possible to grab for themselves in a way that was specific to this language. I know some people don't love when people analyze songs in languages they don't understand, but maybe this will convey that I genuinely try to pay attention to what details I can. If you liked this video, I'd appreciate if you could like and comment, maybe even subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for watching though, I hope you learned something from this, however small, and um, yeah, thank you.